the 70s in Miami. However, they've got a machine which can produce some snow and ice. Moments ago, this was the scene. Into the corner of the end zone it goes, and then shortly after that, a fellow appears tastefully attired as a convict, driving a snowplow. This is an obvious reference to Mark Henderson, the fellow who was on a work release program from prison and who plowed the area for John Smith's winning field goal in Foxborough several weeks ago. The Dolphin fans, at least most of them, love it. What do you think, Trump? Well, my opinion is that they are making a light of a serious breach of coaching, coaching ethics. And with this season, with the strike and all the rest of this stuff, it's in very, very poor taste. I don't believe Don Shula liked it. I don't believe he even knew about it when it started. And to me, it appears like professional wrestling. Don Shula was very upset over the incident in Foxborough. He lodged his protest, but since then he said, let's forget about it. I don't even want to talk about it. So let's go down on the field and ask Bob Greasy whether this is the kind of thing, these antics, that Don Shula would approve of. Bob? Two hours before the game when the snowplow came out and all the snow was deemed up on the field, Don Shula was out and was very surprised that it was happening. He was a little bit upset. Don Shula is a very serious person, but you know, Bob, I don't think it's going to have an outcome on the ball game today. All right, thank you, Bob. It may not be the most important story in the world, but wonderful fodder for columnists and the late-night sports wrap-ups tonight. Let's go back to New York and Len Berman. Thank you, Bob. Temperatures are in the 70s at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Super Bowl tournament begins for the Dolphins and Patriots. Miami at 7-2. New England off a 2-14, 1981. Makes the playoffs under first-year coach Ron Meyer with a mark of 5-4. Hello, everybody. Bob Costas along with Bob Trumpy. Now, we've already discussed in our pregame show the controversial 3-0 victory in the snow at Foxborough by the Patriots over the Dolphins earlier this year. As a matter of fact, New England has beaten Miami 6 of 7 up there. But here, Miami has won 14 straight times against New England dating back to 1966. But Ron Meyer wasn't there during all that. Yeah, let's deal with Ron Meyer. When he took over the New England Patriots, he promised that, one, they would be a much stronger team, and two, that they would win. Well, they are in the Super Bowl tournament. They've won. And this is one of the most physically dominating teams in the NFL. Miami, very similar. These are the only two teams in the NFL who have rushed for more yards than they passed. And whenever you deal with the Miami Dolphins, you deal with Don Shula, the mystique of Don Shula, his knowledge of the game and his knowledge of the rules. An excellent physical game today in Miami. Woodley and Strzok briefly. I'll take Woodley. He's more mobile. He offers more chances for the Miami Dolphins to move the ball down the field. Strzok, just a pocket passer. Go to him in desperation. Bob Greasy, the former All-Pro quarterback of the Dolphins, is with us here today at the Orange Bowl. And a bit later in the broadcast, he'll be joining us in the booth with his insights. Right now, we're just about ready for kickoff. Let's go down to the field. 76 degrees is the official game time temperature. Uwe von Schaumann is set to kick it off for the Dolphins as the Patriots have won the toss. Ricky Smith, who earlier this year had a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against the Jets, is the middleman in a three-deep set. And the rookie, Smith, decides he'll stay right there for a touchback. The New England offense with Steve Grogan at quarterback. Earlier this year, they went with Matt Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh had a good second half after Grogan was hurt two weeks ago against Pittsburgh. But Grogan, a strong game with three touchdown passes last week in the playoff clinching victory against Buffalo. There are his targets. Morgan, Bradshaw is hurt, and Preston Brown, number 81, will go in. Don Hasselbeck, the tight end. Holloway, Hannah, and Brock, all first-round draft choices on that offensive line. Hannah will go to the Pro Bowl for the sixth time this season. Two tight ends on first down, one of them in motion, Hasselbeck. Mark Van Egan makes the catch and breaks a tackle. Picks up five on first down. Now, as we look at the Dolphin defense, they play the 3-4. Bo Camper with a hip pointer and Baumhauer, an injured ankle, had been questionable during the week, but both starting today. Radzinski, Dewey, Roan, and Gordon are their linebackers. And the secondary led the entire NFL. 19 interceptions this year by the Dolphins. If I may add a point there on those 19 interceptions done by 11 different players for the Dolphins. Only Baumhauer and Betters are the only two defensive players that start for the Dolphins without an interception. Second down five from the 25. Tony Collins will carry. Picks up about three before being brought down by Glenn Blackwood, the strong safety, the younger of the two Blackwood brothers. Glenn is 25 years of age. Lyle's been in the league for 10 years. He's 31. 
to uh, put this game in its proper perspective here in the Orange Bowl, the last time the New England Patriots won a football game, Kenneth Sims, the NFL's number one draft choice last year, was seven years old. That's a long time without a victory in Miami. It goes back to the very first time these two teams met in the old AFL in 1966. Tony Collins gets a first down for New England and a gain of seven to the 35-yard line. Trump, they were the Boston Patriots then. Their head coach was Mike Hollaback, and the fledgling Dolphins were coached by the late George Wilson. That's how long ago it was. It's hard to deal with a jinx like that. As a coach, I don't know how you tell your players to get over it, but I can tell you that the, the uh, New England Patriots today facing the Dolphins have 29 new faces on the ball club as opposed to last year, so maybe to most of them it means very little. He played two minutes of the first quarter. Play action fake on first down. Grogan batted up in the air, and was it fielded clean? No, no. No, it was not. Glenn Blackwood thought he had an interception, but they say that he trapped it. He is certainly protesting, but the official did have a good sightline to the ball. Steve Grogan trying to get it to Stanley Morgan. You see great drop by A.J. Dewey. Let's watch the ball closely. I think he got it. I think he got it. Now, it's very hard to tell in an instant whether or not that is an interception or not. And from that angle, we can't really see it. From the first angle, it did appear that he stopped the ball before it hit the ground. But nevertheless, incomplete pass. Gordon McCarter's crew ruling in favor of the Patriots on this one. 12.50 to play in the first quarter. Van Egan carries. All right, now an interesting note about Mark Van Egan and the New England Patriots. We'll watch the interception again. You be the judge. And, of course, with the benefit of the instant replay, it's very hard to tell. Even looking at it four, five, and six times, it's difficult to make that decision. The point I was going to make on Mark Van Egan, the Miami Dolphins have allowed just one running back, 100 yards rushing in a game. And that was Mark Van Egan in the New England Patriots win in Foxborough. In four of the five games the Patriots won this year, they had a 100-yard rusher. Collins three times, and Van Egan once. Brogan gets it away despite some pressure, but it's nowhere near the target. Good choice, threw it out of bounds, double coverage, short and deep, and also had pressure up the middle. The Miami Dolphins are a good blitzing team, and they're going to pressure, and they're going to pressure Steve Grogan all day long. So Grogan's going to have to watch. He's going to have to watch very closely for the blitz and the coverage behind. This is one of the league's best punters, Rich Camarillo. Luke Prestige of Denver made the AFC Pro Bowl squad, but there was vehement disagreement with that decision in New England. Tommy Vigorito is the deep man. He lets it roll. And dead at the Dolphin 22. 11 minutes and 54 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Dolphins have their first possession after a punt of 39 yards by Camarillo. Today's game is brought to you by the new Chrysler Corporation, where low financing and lawn protection helps make car buying easier by new advanced formula stress pads, high-potency stress formula vitamins for people who burn the candle at both ends, and by a company called TRW, where tomorrow is taking shape. Bob Costas and Bob Trumpy at the Orange Bowl. A bit later, Bob Greasy will join us. David Woodley, who threw for three touchdowns against Baltimore last week, hands to Tommy Vigorito on first down, and he pounds out a gain of four. And both offenses start with double tight ends. The Miami Dolphins did just as the New England Patriots did. One wide receiver, two tight ends, two running backs. Vigorito now goes out, and Tony Nathan, who normally starts, does come back in for the second play. So it's Nathan and Andre Franklin, the lead se league second leading rusher this year. Harris, Cephalo, and Bruce Hardy, the tight end. Bob Kuchenberg at age 35 to the Pro Bowl again for the fifth time. He's playing in his 15th playoff game today. Franklin came out. Vigorito stays in. Woodley finds Nathan. First down Miami. Now to show you the value of a Don Shula coached football team in 1981, Tony Nathan was the leading rusher and the leading receiver. He has suffered from minor injuries all season long that have really cut back his performance, and yet the Dolphins still manage to win. Keith Lee, the strong safety, made that tackle. As you look at the facts about Tony Nathan, 
Lee starting at the strong safety in place of Roland James, who with an injured knee is on the injured reserve list and done for the season. From the Dolphin 34, first and 10. Andre Franklin carries for the first time and picks up about four. Franklin had 701 yards rushing this year, second in the league to Freeman McNeil's 786. 3-4 defense, Sims and Williams each taken in the first round this year. Adams, the only veteran among all the defensive linemen on their roster. Andre Tippett was to start today, but veteran Larry McGrew is healthy, and he'll start at the left outside. You saw the other backers. Haynes, Claiborne, Lee, and Sanford, all but Lee, were first-round draft choices at one time or another. Haynes is going to the Pro Bowl for the sixth time in seven years. Franklin on the pitch. They were ready for him, but on sheer strength, he got three, Trump. Interesting choice of formations by the Miami Dolphins here. Once again, once again going with the two tight ends, two running backs, and one wide receiver. You'll watch it from ground level as it comes right at you. Franklin tries to get inside the block on Claiborne, but why soon? Clayton Wysoon, the rookie out of San Angelo State, who has been a pleasant surprise for the New England Patriots. Two weeks ago against Pittsburgh, I believe he was credited with 25 tackles. That's college statistics in there to uh, disrupt the timing of the play. Third down and two and out of the shotgun. Woodley with lots of time and with a first down as a leaping catch is made by Tommy Vigorito. Vigorito, their leading pass receiver this year. That's his 25th reception. And he comes in as kind of a specialty player. Now, interesting thing that Miami did there is, through formation, try to distort the zone somewhat, make the seams and the coverage a little wider. Vigorito down between the two linebackers. Good timing with Woodley. He completes his first pass. And a Sims on the sideline. Hopefully that's not a serious injury. They certainly need his ability out there. Here's this an ankle. We'll keep you posted. It's a first down at the Patriot 41 as Vigorino goes in motion. Franklin carries three, perhaps four on first down. Trump. And right where Sims was is where the Miami Dolphins run. One of the earmarks, I do believe, of the Miami team. Look at there. Raiders ahead of Cleveland. Three to nothing on a 30-27 yard Chris Barr field goal. George Crump, number 91, is playing at the left end in place of Kenneth Sims, at least temporarily for New England. Larry McGrew is in on that last tackle. He missed last week against Buffalo with an ankle injury, and the rookie Andre Tippett replaced him at that time. Exactly eight minutes to play in a thus far scoreless first quarter. Franklin. Why closed soon the on hole the, quickly. Excuse me, Bob. Why soon on the tackle and once again running at the man replacing Ken Sims. That's one of the interesting things that I think uh, Don Shula has always done. George Crump is in there replacing Ken Sims, number 91. They'll take advantage of a young man with very little experience as best they can. The league, Trump, as we've discussed before, changing almost every club much more pass-oriented than in the past, but these are the only two teams in the league who ran for more yardage than they passed for this year. Woodley to the air on third and four. Juggled and dropped. Joe Rose, one of three tight ends that Don Shula uses extensively, couldn't hold it. Great coverage by Paul Dombrowski. He was the fifth defensive back in there. Woodley has plenty of time coming out of the shotgun. Everybody clears out. Rose underneath, but Dombrowski there just to knock the ball away at the last instance. The line of scrimmage, the 35-yard line, a field goal try here would be for 52 yards by Uwe Von Schaumann. Von Schaumann, for the season, is 3 of 5 beyond 40, 0 for 1 beyond 50. Strock holds. No. Long enough, but wide to the right. Von Schaumann had plenty of leg, but came up a bit wide on the accuracy. 7-14 to play first quarter. From the 35, Van Egan carries for a gain of two. Mark Van Egan, no stranger to playoff competition. In a couple of winning Super Bowls, this is his 14th playoff game. Once again, formation, two tight ends, two wide receivers, and Van Egan, the lone running back. And talking to the Miami coaches, they admitted that it's kind of a nightmare to re prepare for the New England Patriots because 
uh, four and five weeks ago, they were running at 60 and 50 times a game and dominating the line of scrimmage. And then last week against Buffalo, they come out and throw it almost at will, first and second down. It's a nightmare for the defensive coaches to try to figure out what they may do today. On second and eight, good protection for Grogan. Low throw and incomplete. Intended for Lynn Dawson, one of two tight ends in on the play. Just to give Don Shula something else to think about, Andy Johnson, who had been inactive since breaking a hand in preseason, has been reactivated, and Johnson is kind of a Don McCauley-type player, a, a veteran who can get you that short yardage catch in a third and five, third and six situation, make the big play. Even though New England has not won in Miami, uh, Andy Johnson has certainly made most of the games very interesting. He is a multi-talented individual, can run, can pass, can block, and if he plays today, it'll be his first game this season. Third down eight. Down he goes. Flag down. We'll see what the penalty is, but for the time being, we give Ernest Groen credit for the sack. Patriot quarterbacks had been sacked only twice in their last four games. The line had been doing an excellent job. Here's Gordon McCarter. Holding defense. And when you're in third down and eight situations against Miami, you are really in trouble because they come with a four, one, six type of defense. They can double cover, double cover all wide receivers. Number Mike working intermittently, holding against New England. He motioned the wrong way. So it'll be fourth down. The sack will stand. So now Rich Camarillo to kick. 43.7 was his overall average. His net average, 37.7, an even more impressive figure. And in five of seven games after the strike, he was kicking in bad weather and nonetheless ran up some very fine statistics. Vigorito fields this kick. He returned one for a touchdown earlier this year against the Jets. Breaks two tackles and is hemmed in at the 35. Brian Ingram made the tackle for the Patriots. Six minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first quarter at the Orange Bowl. No score. Draft choice in the entire league this past year is back in. The rookie out of Texas. They taped up that ankle and he missed one series. The punt by Camarillo just before the commercial carried 44 yards. Vigorito's return was good for seven. First down Dolphins at their 35. I noticed that shot of that ankle. That was an industrial strength ankle, was it not? <laughs> There's about miles of tape rather than yards on that foot. Woodley got them into Patriot territory the last time. But a long Von Schaumann field goal attempt was off target. Good First goal. down pass complete to Cephalo who averaged better than 20 yards a catch this year on 17 receptions. They're near midfield as we check with New York. I'm in NFL 82 in New York. Let's check out the other game. The first play from scrimmage in Los Angeles. Plunkett goes back, and he fires 64 yards to Cliff Branch, set up a field goal. The number one seed, the Raiders, are on top of the Browns, 3 to nothing. Back to the Orange Bowl, Bob. Ball spotted at the Dolphin 46. Five and a half minutes to play first quarter. Andra Franklin gets four yards on first down. Franklin used exclusively as a running back. Rarely the target of a Woodley pass. He caught only three passes this year. And to give you an idea of how much they've worked in Trump, he had 177 carries this year. The second highest total on the team belonged to Tony Nathan with 66. So Franklin had very nearly three times as many carries as the next busiest running back. Uh, interesting that he was originally drafted out of Nebraska to block for David Overstreet, their first pick, who then went to Canada, and Franklin has emerged as a quality running back in the NFL, somewhat similar to the era of uh, Larry Zonka here in Miami. Back to a fullback oriented offense for the Miami Dolphins, which I do believe Don Shula is very comfortable with. Throw the ball sparingly, Try to control the line of scrimmage, beat up your opponent, wear them down in this heat and humidity. It's worked very well for him. Don Shula, 211. Well, there it is. I was going to give you the figures. He's won 211 games. His winning percentage is the best amongst all active NFL coaches. Shotgun again on third down. Woodley, who led all NFL quarterbacks this year in rushing, cannot escape. And the Dolphins will have to punt. Lester Williams came in. 
He was the second of their two first round draft choices this year out of Miami of Florida. So he's returning home and he made that play. Certainly familiar with the Orange Bowl turf here. Probably a big thrill for him too to come back into Miami as a professional football player. Once again, attention to Ken Sibbs' ankle. Tom Orris in his second year out of Ohio State averaged 38.7 per punt this year. His net average was 34.2. Very little pressure, so Orris holds it for a while. Let the coverage get down there. Ricky Smith, the return man, allows it to bounce into the end zone. A 51-yard kick for Orris. Three minutes and 53 seconds remaining in quarter number one. Patriot ball. Third broadcaster today, three Bobs, Greasy, <laughs> Trumpy, Costas. Two of us have played in the Pro Bowl as you attempt to determine <laughs> two which of us? two. That's what I said. Two of the three. Come on, Trump. Bob Greasy, anything so far surprised you? Not really. Uh, they came out, both teams come out running, trying to establish their running attack, both using double tight ends. Uh, Shula's using a lot of uh, substitutions. I think they're just trying to get their feet on the ground and get back into the ball game. Very, very conservative. Exactly. Third possession for New England from their 20. Mark Van Egan carries. Trump, it was interesting with all the controversy this year in New England about the coaching methods of Ron Meyer and some players asking to be traded. Van Egan commented, hey, this stuff is vanilla compared to what I've gone through with the Raiders. This is nothing. He is certainly used to having a bad press, but I'll tell you what. Uh, at times, distractions like that can hurt a team, but also at times they can help a team. It takes your mind off the pressure of winning a, a playoff football game. Last week's victory over Buffalo was astounding, absolutely astounding in face of all the controversy. On second and six, Grogan has lots of time and a receiver, Lynn Dawson. He's close to a first down, and I think that he's going to have it. Let's wait and see where... Gordon McCarter's crew spots it. It is a first down for the Patriots. This is a great coverage team in the Miami Dolphins under the auspices of one Bill Arnsparger and Lynn Dawson sharing time with Don Hasselbeck and if they can use those two tight ends and get them down the field it will keep Miami uh, from getting 11 guys up on the line of scrimmage. They've begun to use them more of late Trump. For example Hasselbeck caught 15 passes this year 10 of them in the last two weeks. Now look at this formation two tight ends two wide receivers and Van Egan. Fake to Van Egan all kinds of time. Lob to Hasselbeck who's driven out at the 37 yard line. A gain of five on first down. New England keeping Hasselbeck for pass protection. If the linebacker blitzes, he didn't. Brzezinski was in coverage. It's just a little outlet pass to uh, Don Hasselbeck. Neither of these teams has had great success in the playoffs of late. Miami has lost four straight playoff games since they won their second consecutive Super Bowl against Minnesota in January 74. Included among those four straight defeats, two of the greatest games of all time. The 28-26 loss in December of 74 at Oakland and last year's overtime loss against the Chargers. Van Egan. Van Egan for a first down at the New England 45. The Patriots have appeared twice in the playoffs since joining the NFL and they have lost both times. A controversial game against Oakland in 1976. You recall the roughing the passer call against Stabler, which kept the late Oakland drive alive. 24-21 was the score there. Last time they were in the playoffs was 78, and Houston beat them 31-14. Is that Leroy Neiman? I guess not. It's not Dr. Ferdy Pacheco either. Those are the only two sports artists I know. Van Egan. Perhaps three. Repeating something we said at the top of the show, Ron Meyer, when he came to New England, was appalled at the physical strength of the New England Patriots. He said they're going to get on the weights, and I'm going to make them get on the weights. And the offensive line of the New England Patriots has increased in general size and weight and also strength. And on the left side, you've got uh, John Hanna, perennial All-Pro, and a young man named Holloway, Brian Holloway. Both are giant people and possess great strength. And it's afforded Miami or New England the luxury of when they win, they average about 205 yards rushing per game. You mentioned Holloway's size, 6'7, 288. Brogan wants to go up top and just beyond the reach of Stanley Morgan. Not a bad idea. Stanley Morgan, for the sixth straight year, has averaged 20 yards or better per catch. 
and the NFL record is held by one Paul Warfield with seven straight seasons. It is a foot race, one that at that point Stanley Morgan was winning if the ball had been on the mark. Morgan is another one who complained about being excluded from Patriot game plans, but in the last two weeks, he came alive and they began going to him against Pittsburgh and Buffalo. Bob, I'll tell you, receivers generally complain about anything and everything. Including Bob Trumpy when he was in the Absolutely. NFL. Absolutely. Third down, seven. Good protection for Grogan. Off the hands of Ken Toller, an incomplete. A Rich Camarillo punt is upcoming with 52 seconds to play in the first quarter. But first, a report from New York. All right, Bob Costas, let's check out the other game in Los Angeles. Jim Plunkett and the Raiders leading the Browns 3 to nothing. So Plunkett wants more. Throws the bomb for Christensen. Intercepted by Hanford Dixon, his second of the day. The Browns are still within three. Back to all the Bobs. All right, thank you, Lenny. Boy, Hanford Dixon. He had three interceptions in one game against Terry Bradshaw. Picked off another one at Houston. Two already in this game. Lots of room. Bigarito. Dancing to the 19-yard line. Tim Golden made the tackle on the play for the Patriots. A 43-yard punt by Camarillo. A nine-yard return by Bigarito. We're in the last minute of the first quarter. Limp Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida, Captain Patrick Henry aboard. He's from Parsons, West Virginia, a 192-foot airship filled with over 205,000 cubic feet of non-flammable helium. To give you shots like this at the Orange Bowl, where nearly every seat is filled, but they couldn't sell it out in time to lift the local blackout. 40 seconds to play, first quarter. Off and ball at their 18, Andre Franklin just barrels people over. Loose football, but perhaps after the whistle. Let's see. No, they say Patriot ball. The Patriots were plus eight this year on the giveaway takeaway table, and that's an impressive statistic and part of the reason why they're in the playoffs. Franklin, after a good game, coughs it up, and the Patriots have the game's first break. That's one of the things that coaches in playoffs game, playoff games worry about, that turnover that they can't account for. First of all, number 60, Taves of Miami, does a great job on the block. But watch Franklin. Let's see where it happens. 50 Blackman on the hit. There he's going down. And it looks like Sanford got the ball away from him at the last minute. And it's loose. My, uh, New England ball. 30-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Credit Keith Lee, who's starting at strong safety today in place of the injured Roland James with the recovery. Mark Van Egan. Good yardage on first down. They had been critical of Keith Lee in New England, saying that he was not strong enough to really help on run support and inexperienced in terms of coverage, but he turned in that play. And those turnovers, that's what coaches die of. This first quarter has been basically a wash. There's just five seconds left, and this is the first time that we've had some action by either team. And I tend to think that the longer New England stays in this game, the better chance they're going to have, just psychologically. When the second quarter begins, the Patriots will have it second and five at the 25-yard line of the Dolphins. In Bay alongside the Orange Bowl and back inside. After a scoreless first quarter, these teams have played five quarters of football this year for a total of three points between them. Very interesting. This is a great situation, too, for the New England offense. At the 25-yard line, second and five, this is the one down that coaches dream about. They can call just about anything. And what they call is a handoff to Van Egan for a first down. Well, he averages 4.7 yards a carry at his advanced age, so it's probably a pretty good bet. Bob Greasy? You know, I, I had the pleasure to do the uh, snowplow game, if you can call it the, uh, the uh, pleasure. But it, in watching this game, the New England Patriots offense is very similar to what they did up in the snow. Tony Collins, their number two receiver and their leading rusher, is out of the ball game, and Mosey Tatupu and Van Egan are alternating with two tight ends. That's exactly the offense that they used in New England, and that's the, the offense that worked for them, and they're throwing a little bit more out of it, but Collins has not been in the ball game in the first quarter. They've got a little bit of a problem with the scoreboard clock, and they're trying to get it set straight right now. 
Obviously, there are not 39 seconds remaining in this period. We've just begun the second quarter. Bob, Bob Greasy, if I may also ask you a question, would you not agree that as long as New England can stay close and keep the, the score at least in their favor, they can do what they like to do best, and that's run it? Well, their strength is their offensive line. The Dolphins have had problems stopping the run. The view from the end zone, and the Patriots are 18 yards from it. Tatupu's first carry. Sheds tacklers, a flag goes down. Great play by the nose man, Bob Baumhauer. That is the toughest spot in the NFL nowadays to play. Holding. Offense. We'll watch Bob Baumhauer, 73, nose man on Pete Brock. It, it appears that he has a predetermined move to that side of the center, and therefore he beats Brock. Tatupu slips the tackle, but nevertheless, Baumhauer's there to at least cut down on the speed of the block. Excellent player, Baumhauer. Gigantic legs. He's got... He's got prehistoric legs. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you can move that guy. He'll be going to the Pro Bowl this year. Why do you say that that spot... Might... Holding! Well, Gordon McCarter's mic works we, sometimes, we... and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not disagreeing. I'd just like you to explain why the nose tackle spot is the toughest of all positions to well, play. Well, even though they are no longer allowed, offensive linemen are no longer allowed to cut defensive linemen at the legs, generally, you've got... Sometimes two and three guys banging on you from that spot. The center and the two guards, plus a lead blocker coming out of the backfield. It is a very, very uh, physically demanding spot. The draw play on first and 20. Tatupu gets a little bit of it back. All right, let's show the other side of the situation now. As I said, at times, nose men have a predetermined move. Watch Baumhauer. Pete Brock there does a great job, although he does have some foreign substance in his hand. And also... <laughs> an arm around an arm, but nevertheless, the nose men at times look brilliant because they have that predetermined move. At other times, they're going to look very, very bad because they're going the wrong side of the center. So that's one for Brock and one for Baumhauer. Thirteen forty to play in the first half. Go ahead, Trump. Confusion in the New England huddle. Play calling, this is a new system. One of the things that's not much been talked about about New England, they've been under the same system since 1983. Ron Meyer comes in in 1982 and changes it all, but they play very well. Timeout, Patriots. One didn't get it. The Raiders got the ball back. Plunk it. Far side to Marcus Allen. He rumbles 35 yards. The Raiders are driving. They already lead it. 3-0. Back to Miami. You know, it's funny, Trump, when you think about the fact that three running backs were drafted this year before Marcus Allen in the first round. Yeah, there were a lot of people that that uh, looked at the stigma of the Heisman Trophy winner out of USC and said, I want no part of him. But uh, Al Davis has certainly taken chances with other people. He doesn't mind that. This is, uh, Bob's. this is a passing situation. There's no doubt about that. This is a passing situation. Second and 14. A successful toss to Lynn Dawson which will give them a first down and goal inside the 10 at about the eight yard line is where they put it down excellent job too and that Lynn Dawson was just able to find the seam in the zone watch him at the right of the screen Gordon with the coverage at the line of scrimmage he jumps inside him and then all of a sudden it's just the seam see there's not even any pattern run he goes straight up the field but right on the money by Steve Grogan. Good completion. Bob Greasy. Last week I saw New England. They used a lot of double tight end passing when they were set next to each other. That was a little bit of a different wrinkle than they used last week. Something Miami wasn't prepared for. We're scoreless, but maybe not for long. First and goal, New England. Audible. If they can hear it. Lots of time. Do it away. Up onto our camera stand there, adjacent to the end zone. That can be a real problem in the Orange Bowl. This is a stadium that you can't hear very well when the, pit, the fans aren't cheering. When they get down to the closed end and they're cheering, there's no way the offense is going to hear. And you saw on your screen Glenn Blackwood raising his hands and giving hand signals so the defense could audibleize. And the racket begins anew as they come out of the huddle. Van Egan only for a couple on second down. Van Egan now with eight carries for 36 yards. Bob Greasy. Bob, you know, I think Grogan is doing the right thing, and that is he's getting up to the line of scrimming and getting the play called and going with it. 
That time he went up on a quick count before the crowd got to be too loud, got the ball snapped, and got the playoff. If you stand up there and raise your hands, you're never going to get the playoff. And if you ask the officials to quiet the crowd, that makes them twice as loud. Ken's holder to the right, Stanley Morgan to the left on third and goal at the six. Bob, this is an opportunity that New England cannot miss. They have got to get the ball in the end zone. He was nearly sacked, then it was nearly intercepted by Kim Bocamper. The ball was on top of him before he had a chance to react, and they'll have to settle for a John Smith field goal try. Mike Kozlowski, on a safety blitz, was right in the middle of Drogan's face, had hands right up. Watch once again. Good pressure. There you see 40, Kozlowski in there to bother him. Drogan knows he's got to get it off in a hurry, and Bocamper at six foot five and a half, six foot six. Just drops off in coverage, gets his hands up there just in a way. That's a missed opportunity. Even though they get three points in this place, they got to take advantage of every single scoring opportunity. White Wheeler snaps, Matt Cavanaugh holds, and John Smith, the third most accurate field goal kicker in NFL history behind Efren Herrera and Tony Frisch, makes it 3 0 Patriots with 11 53 to play in the first half, but they had first and goal and couldn't punch it in. Donald has just thrown this 47-yard bomb to feature. So the Browns are in business. They still trail it 3 to nothing. Back to Miami. All right, thank you, Lenny. John Smith, who was injured earlier this year, the Patriots went with noble Rexford Robinson as their kicker until Smith was able to recover. And the native of Southampton, England, boots it down to the four. Fulton Walker on the return for Miami upended before he can get to the 25 yard line. Bob Greasy, let's look back on the third down play as the Patriots tried to get it in. Good defensive play. As Trump said, it's a double safety blitz. The quarterback sees it, knows he can't block everybody, knows he has to throw it quickly. The wide receiver will run a little slant in, but Bo Camper, knowing that, will pull out and block the pass down. Give credit to Bill Arnsbarger for knowing the adjustment for the Patriots and having a guy in the alley where he's trying to throw the ball. Defensive end, drops off in coverage and began his career with the Miami Dolphins as a linebacker. Made the Pro Bowl as a linebacker. That's right. Nathan and Vigorito are the backs. First and 10 from the 24 for Woodley. Tony Nathan just back to the line of scrimmage. Spun down by Luther Henson, number 70. Bob Greasy, watch David Woodley on the replay. David Woodley is a third-year player, has been doing a good job. Shula's calling the plays for him, trying to get something going, just a little screen pass. And a lot of times, you'll say, when does Shula decide to put in Strzok, or when does he go with Woodley? They haven't scored anything. They haven't gotten much going in the first quarter. Shula calls the plays. If his philosophy, if his play calling isn't working, a lot of times in the second half or the third quarter, fourth quarter, he'll go with Strzok just to get some different plays in there. Hmm, interesting. Tight end. He's oh. got it. A lunging catch by Joe Rose in New England territory at the 40. Rick Sanford on the coverage, but too late. Very well read by Woodley. Double rotation zone to the outside. And this takes great timing and great practice. This is right on the money. You want the completion. It doesn't make any difference if Rose throw, falls down because you'll run New England out of that defense if you can beat it just once like that. Two years ago, David Woodley couldn't have made that throw. It was a double zone. He had to lay it over a linebacker, get it there. Now he's learned to take a little bit off and put a little air under it. It's a good throw. Big Got it play. over the linebacker, Steve Nelson, for a gain of 36. Andre Franklin for five more. Luther Henson and Steve Nelson made the tackle. Anytime a defensive lineman is involved in a play for New England with the exception of 11-year veteran Julius Adams, you're talking about a rookie, Trump. No experience at all outside of Adams. And we make note once again that Ken Sims is out of the game and Trump is in there, number 91. So apparently Sims is having problems with his ankle. Second and five from the 35 of the Pats. Okay, this formation trying to spread the zone, make the seams a little wider. Tight end up the middle? Yes. Juggled and caught by Bruce Hardy. Hardy for a first down at the 16. The same thing that the New England Patriots did, Bob. 
stretching out the zone, trying to make the seams wider. Woodley has the presence to wait and the strength of arm to whip it in there. Somebody ran the wrong pattern. Vigorito and Hardy in the same spot, but nevertheless, the completion. Again, a good play by David Woodley, the thing he's been doing the last couple of weeks in particular, going to his second and third receivers. His primary receiver was covered in the strength of the zone. Nine minutes to play in the first half. Pats lead it 3-0. Andre Franklin tripped up. And had he not been, he was about to turn the corner and get a little bit of running room. Watch the trap block by Taves. He's on Blackman. Franklin up underneath. Excellent job. Wysoon tries to make the tackle, but the, the riffraff on the ground there, and I don't mean that bad players, I just mean the, the riffraff on the ground that you got to jump over. Franklin has still been running. Clayton Wysoon, who made the move all the way from NAIA ball at Angelo State to a starter's role in the NFL in one year. Second and eight, Tony Nathan. Draw play by the Miami Dolphins run in the general vicinity of where Ken Sims was, but I do believe that was designed to go up the middle. Let's watch Trump. He's thinking pass all the way. It's fan blocking by the offensive line of the Miami Dolphins, and then Loxo is able to hook him, and Nathan, with the great instincts that most great running backs have, Feels the open spot, breaks to the outside, first down. First and goal at the six. Brothers have traded field goals in Los Angeles. Chris Barr first for the Raiders, then Matt Barr for the Browns. They're tied at three early in the second quarter. Tony Nathan to the four for a gain of two behind Kuchenberg's Flag block. down. Very late flag thrown from the side. From the reaction of the Patriots, looks like it's against them. That's going to cost them half the distance. Right, and it'll be a first down. Let's see if we can pick it up. Julius Adams in pursuit. And, no, I believe it's Sanford, yes, grabbing the face mask. Yeah, first and five. Now a tremendous well, test less for than the, that because it's going to be moved inside yes. the five yard line. Now a tremendous test for the New England defense as Miami's responded at the other end of the field in the first quarter. Ron Meyer won't win any popularity contests among his players, but if you're the owner of the ball club, you look at two and fourteen and eighty-one and five and four in the playoffs this year. And you don't talk about popularity. The coach they love to hate, apparently. Two big backs, Andre Franklin at 225, Woody Bennett, number 34, at 222, are in on first and goal from the two-yard line. Protect the ball here. Protect the ball offense. Bennett, next to nothing. Julius Adams made the tackle. You won't miss anything. We'll be right back, but first to New York. Okay, Bob, you mentioned the Battle of the Barr Brothers a few moments ago in Los Angeles. Now Matt Barr, 52 yards, ties Groza's Cleveland playoff record. That ties what Chris Barr has done. It's 3-3 in the second quarter in L.A. Let's go back to the goal line drive in Miami. Bob, I don't want to be accused of rooting for the New England Patriots, but the science of offense is inside the five-yard line about to score. Protect the ball. Don't give it up here. Think of your assignment. Concentrate. Woodley has it on his hip and now he has it in the end zone to Bruce Hardy he juggled it but he held it touchdown Miami this is one of the things that David Woodley can do in the certain plays that when he's in there Strock will not run this play it's a little play action pass this is a new play this play is not in the basic offense of the Miami Dolphins Bob I noticed that he almost threw it over the tight end's head. Watch this. It is not what you would call your Bob Greasy spiral. <laughs> he was so wide open, as you know, Trump, oh. being a tight end. We get out there by ourselves, and it's the hardest passes to complete sometimes. Yeah, you are absolutely right. It makes you shiver when that ball comes over there, out there to you, end over end. David Woodley threw only five touchdown passes this year, three of them last week against Baltimore. 
Von Schaumann connects, and it's 7-3 Miami. All right, as New England could not take advantage of their scoring opportunity for a touchdown at this end, Miami does take advantage of theirs. Six points. Woodley to Hardy. The extra point good. 7-3 Dolphins. 6-36 to play in the half. Went 76 yards in nine plays, kept the ball just over five minutes. And Bob Greasy, David Woodley is seven of eight so far for 92 yards and a touchdown. And that's by Shula's design. He wants to throw safe, short passes to get him going on a good day today so he can play well. Ricky Smith fields the Uva von Shaman kick and brings it back to just shy of the 30 yard line. Out in Los Angeles, the Raiders have scored. Let's go to Lenny Berman. This is Len Berman in New York, and the Raiders are on the move. Plunk it. He looks for Cliff Branch. Branch makes the move, loses it out of bounds, and Marcus Allen scores on the next play. The Raiders now lead it 10 to 3. Bob? Thanks, Len. And there's that man again, Trump, Marcus Allen. Okay, now New England with a normal set. One tight end, two wide receivers, and Tony Collins, our leading rusher with the ball. But he can't turn the corner. Well, he does shed one tackler. Don McNeil had come up from a corner spot, but he got by him. Then Glenn Blackwood gets credit for the tackle. Tony Collins this year rushed for 632 yards, one of the better figures in the league. He had three 100-yard games, including 161 against the Oilers. You see Ken Toller, number 82, shuttling the plays from Ron Meyer to Steve Grogan. Once again, the same set. Morgan, Toller, Van Egan, Collins, and one tight end. Collins got seven, so it's second and three. Reverse. Here it is with Stanley Morgan. The Dolphins snuff it out. Larry Gordon makes the tackle. Now, even though it doesn't gain a lot of yards, it may do something for the New England Patriots offense. The Miami Dolphins historically have been a great pursuit team. Always smallish type of people with great speed and there you see Larry Gordon making the tackle it'll keep the defense honest somewhat uh, they, they can't just pursue the way everybody's blocking that's the design if you can gain yards that's a plus but I think it's to try to make the defense a little more honest they lose three third down six Brogan protected well batted up and incomplete the target was Hasselbeck but Glenn Blackwood was there and so was Don McNeil Miami is obviously defensively going to take away Stanley Morgan as best they can and leave Don Hasselbeck open down the middle they had short and deep coverage on Hasselbeck and I believe the primary receiver was covered enough that he couldn't uh, that Grogan couldn't go to him and he tries to force it into uh, Hasselbeck that's a defense that did its job there keeping it away from the outside guys and trying to make Hasselbeck the big play guy for New England the Dolphin defense allowed the fewest points in the AFC and the fewest yards overall in the entire league Vigorito driven back inside the 10 by another good Camarillo kick stutter steps his way out to the 21 yard line no penalties highly unusual on a punt stops with five minutes and 11 seconds to play in the second quarter after the in New York here's the Marcus Allen touchdown I mentioned a few moments ago his 15th TD of the year is a rookie the Raiders are on top of the Browns 10 to 3 let's go back to Miami now all right thanks Len the last kick by Camarillo was good for 58 yards the return by Vigorito for 13 first down for the Dolphins at their 21 5 11 to play in the first half Kenneth Sims back in the ballgame, and now you see they've double taped his ankle on the inside and outside of his shoe. And for a pass rusher, a guy who, even for his size, has great speed, it's got to affect his play. Tony Nathan cuts it back upfield, gets 10, and is very close to the first down. Bob, and Ken Sims is really hurt. He got one. A double team by the tight end in the tackle and watch the way they turn him in here he is really favoring that leg there you see Hardy and Loxo and if he can't play any better than that on an ankle he's got to get out in fact he is leaving 
He is leaving the field. George, George Crump comes back onto the field, trying to do the best he can. They generally say in playoff games, you got six months to recover if you get hurt, so get out there. But if that's all the better he can play on a bad ankle, then he, he should go to the bench. So now there's a weak spot. Now there's a weak spot for Miami. And Don Shula historically has gone in a weak spot. I'm not saying Crump is a bad player, but he's not a starter. He's a relief person for Kenneth Sims. Nathan again upended after a gain of two. Lester Williams made that tackle. Now let's watch that, that weak link. Once again, I'm not saying that Crump is a bad player. I'm saying he's an inexperienced player. I'm saying look at the job that Loxo does on him. He is going to have a very, very busy day. They are going to try to pick on him in third and short situations. That's what offensive coaches, great minds, look for. A weakness somewhere and then exploit it. For 10 to play second quarter, 7-3 Dolphins. Nathan getting plenty of work on this drive, but slips down at the 35, and this will leave him with third down and about seven. Don Blackman on the tackle as we pause briefly for station identification on the NBC television network. This is WNBC-TV, New York. Bob Costas, Bob Trumpy, Bob Greasy. And the last of the three, I'll ask you this question. You're privy to the Dolphin game plan. What is Woodley likely to be going with here? They've been throwing a lot to their inside receivers. The outside receivers haven't caught many balls in third down situations. Either Rose Vigorito or Nathan. I would, I would try to cover. Or Woodley. Woodley <laughs> has the first down and then some. Sprinting across midfield to the 49-yard line of the Patriots. That was not in the game plan when I was playing. That play. Well, but now, wait a minute, Grease. <laughs> they timed your 40 with an hourglass. That's why it wasn't in there. This is a good job by Grease. This is a, by Woodley. Excuse yeah. me, Greasy's in the booth. You see that Crump is frozen for a second, and Woodley does have great speed. He was a, he was a part-time quarterback at LSU, one of a two-quarterback system. And he was the 13th quarterback taken in the 1980 draft. And he, he shone so brightly in training camp that Don Schuler literally could not believe what he was seeing in this young man. But he, he offers mobility to the Miami Dolphins offense that very few other teams had. A year ago in that game against the Chargers, that overtime classic, Woodley became the youngest quarterback ever to start an NFL playoff game. Tight end. Up top, first down. Incomplete. Overthrew him. Bob Greasy. They were looking for the same double zone that they had earlier. He was trying to hit the tight end down the field. As you see, there's a man in the middle of the field. Sanford is in the middle of the field. When the tight end reads that, he hooks in the middle. He does not continue on down the field. David Woodley thought he was going to go on down. He misread the coverage. Second down. Bob, now let me ask you a question. You said on the one that he completed to, uh, to Rose a little bit ago on double rotation, he put air underneath it. Would it have helped him to put that ball up a little bit? No, because there was a... That was a definitely a hook situation oh, for I the see. tight end. He should I not see. have continued down the field. The tight end did hook. David just misread the coverage. Second and ten from the 49. Good job of waiting and then finding Rose, but did he catch it cleanly? No. Earlier, Blackwood lost an interception as the officials ruled that he trapped it, and here they say no reception a trap. Obviously... The New England Patriots are going to try to protect the outside as best they can and leave those safeties back there in single coverage. Hard to determine whether or not that's a catch. Now, I will tell you that one of the responsibilities in a zone coverage like this is to keep the tight end from going in there. The linebackers are supposed to, one, hold him up at the line of scrimmage, and two, keep him from getting into that weak spot of that zone. The replay backs the officials up on that one, Trump. When he first touched it, it was definitely above the ground, but then it squirted out of his hands for an instant, touched the ground before he assumed control. They're generally right. It's Under pressure, he unloads for Doriel Harris, who turned around and caught it despite pass interference. What a whirling move by Harris for a great catch. I'm assuming the pass interference was against the Patriots. Bob Greasy? It looked to me like it was, but this was just a great adjustment by Daryl Harris. It was a blitz on the play. It was not a safety blitz. It was just a linebacker blitz. He had the protection, one-on-one -on -one coverage in the secondary. The problem with blitzing is the defensive back cannot see the ball coming. Daryl Harris did see it and was able to make the adjustment. I'll tell you the other thing that's miraculous about that play 
is that generally if a receiver can't see the throw of the ball thrown it is so very difficult to turn around and make an adjustment to the flight of the ball Harris shows his athletic ability to do that the ball was about halfway there when he first caught sight of it Blackman on the blitz watch he, he just barely look at that how quick my goodness that's miraculous that is great athletic ability by that young man the gain is 36 just under three minutes to play in the half Franklin rumbles up the middle and they can't stop him until he's to the one yard line It's amazing to me that how a great individual play like that by Duriel Harris will elevate the rest of the players on the team. And you see great blocking up front, even though Franklin will get the yards. It was a good trap play, a good uh, cross block by the center and guards right at the heart of the New England Patriots defense over Sims and Franklin for a first down, first and goal. And they've got the two trucks in there, Franklin and Bennett to keep them out on four cracks from the one. Franklin, touchdown. It took one try. The Dolphins played five and a half quarters of football against the Patriots before they ever got on the board against them, but now they've scored touchdowns on their last two possessions. Shula calls that his elephant backfield. His two big fullbacks <laughs> put them in there. They aren't going to be running any sweeps when those two guys are in there. Obviously a disheartening day for one Kenneth Sims. And he wants to play. And, of course, the rest of his teammates realize with him out of the lineup what weakness the defense now has. Von Schaumann's point after is good. Don Shula's club, which hasn't lost to New England in the Orange Bowl since 1966, leads it by 11 with just over two minutes to play in the half. Darkness begins to settle in at the Orange Bowl. Von Schaumann preparing to kick off 14-3. It didn't take very long to cover those 79 yards. Big play in that drive was Duriel Harris. That was, that was stupendous. I mean, the biggest adjective you can find for athletic ability. That is so, so very difficult to do in the last split second to turn around and make the catch. And he made it against Mike Haynes, who is uh, one of the finest defensive backs in the league. Ricky Smith. Very dangerous, but they hem him in at the 29-yard line. Steve Shull made the tackle, number 52 for Miami. A look out over the city as we reach the two-minute warning. Patriot ball, but they trail by 11. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. A minute and 59 seconds to play in the first half. The Orange Bowl in Miami is the scene. I guess officially it is a sellout crowd, although, as we mentioned, it did not come in time to lift the blackout, but I don't see very many empty seats here. There should be very nearly 70,000 people on hand. New England going with two tight ends, two wide receivers, and one running back. Rogan in the air on first down with lots of time, and Lynn Dawson, the tight end, makes the catch. A penalty marker is down on the play, and Dawson is down at the 42-yard line. I don't see the flag. I think it's some paper on the field, Bob. First down. I guess you're right. In the midst of the two-minute oh. drill, ball knocked away. This is going to be a fumble. The Patriots are on top of it. Pete Brock made the recovery, the center. The clock continues to run now. Watch once again. Yes, sir. That is a fumble. That is not a forward pass. It appeared it was Bo Camper, the guy who might have been Doug Betters, number 75. Speaking of which, there's the sack. Coming in on that, A.J. Dewey from his linebacker spot. Bob Greasy. I think this is what makes the Dolphins so tough defensively. Bill Arnsbarger will move A.J. Dewey who was initially a uh, defensive lineman 
and now he's playing linebacker. We'll move him into the line. We'll stand him up as a linebacker. We'll move him strong side, weak side. The problem for the offensive line is they have to know whether, are we going to block him as a lineman or as a, as a linebacker. Each offensive lineman has to find out who they're going to block, and then the, defense, then the offensive backs have to know who they're going to block. That time, it was a big mismatch. Uh, Dewey got on a, on a linebacker. After the sack, Dewey asked for a timeout for Miami, so now they're thinking ahead with the Patriots facing third and 28. Camarillo's a great kicker, but even so, they figure to get the ball in position to do something with it in about a minute to go. Trump. Bob, I, I got a question for a former quarterback here of a pretty good uh, reputation. What is the coach telling you in that situation? Grogan talking to Meyer. <laughs> what are they going over there? Well, at third and 28, I'm sure Grogan say, what do you like? And, and, and Ronnie Meyer is saying, I don't have anything. But uh, this, this situation is a lot different than if it were on the goal line or if it was a tight situation. I'm sure all they're concerned about now is picking up some yardage, not turning the ball over, getting a safe play, something that is safe. I think it's very interesting the fact that this two-minute drill, the New England Patriots started off in their two-minute drill with double tight end set. Yeah. They are very happy with their double tight ends and the things that they can do by crisscrossing the tight ends. The Dolphins were in their nickel, and the Patriots were in their double tight end, so they must feel they can pass very well from that double tight end set. And Berman and company will have the highlights of the games earlier today. Washington and Green Bay, easy winners. The one going on in Los Angeles between the Raiders and the Browns and the first half here in just a bit. Third and 28, Brogan airs it out for Stanley Morgan, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Gerald Small. Very, very poor choice. Very poor choice by Steve Brogan. The Miami Dolphins now have the ball with two timeouts remaining in the first half, and there's no way he's going to complete this, this pass. Brogan is rolling to the right, initially intended, obviously, an out pattern. And Small just playing center field does do a good job. Generally, you would like to have the receiver forget about the catch. Make sure he doesn't intercept it. But Miami's now got another chance to put three points on the board. I think that was a very poor choice on Steve's part. I think what you're saying, Trump, is, is, is Grogan threw it further than Camarillo could have kicked it, and they could have had a chance for a return. Now they get the ball way down in their own territory, whereas before they would have set up for a good return possibility. So in that case, Bob Greasy, maybe it isn't such a bad call. Well, they should have knocked the ball down. Uh, instead of catching it for, for the Patriots, it was a good call. Woodley sacked by Dennis Owens, number 98, a rookie from North Carolina State. Dolphin quarterbacks were sacked only 11 times during the regular season, lowest figure in the league. So you criticize Grogan for his choice of plays, and you criticize Small for not having the presence of mind to just knock it down rather than picking it off. Should have knocked it down. I'm, I'm sure Ronnie Meyer didn't tell him to throw a long interception. They were trying to get a big play, maybe an interference call, but uh, that's the breaks of the game. The Dolphins have two timeouts remaining, but for now, as you can see, the clock is running. Inside handoff off the shotgun to Tony Nathan but only to the 22-yard line before Lester Williams wraps him up. The clock is still running. And now, evidently, Bob Greasy, Don Shula, is content to take a 14-3 lead into the locker room. Bob, I make note of the fact that Mark Dennard is in its center. Uh, we hadn't noticed that Stevenson was out at all. Mark Dennard is a designated snapper for the shotgun oh. formation. It's in the world of specialization in the National Football League, it's gotten down to a center that goes in just to snap the shotgun. Didn't realize that. Dwight Stevenson, who's the regular, just in his third year, some people think he should have made the Pro Bowl instead of the great Mike Webster from Pittsburgh. 14-3 Dolphins at halftime. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda, who invites you to experience the all-new Mazda 626 by the Bell System, expanding your ability to communicate. And by Merrill Lynch, whose ability to guide you through the intricacies of investing makes them a breed apart. Just about ready to start the third quarter at the Orange Bowl. Bob Costas along with Bob Trumpy and Bob Greasy will rejoin us shortly as well. The Dolphins have the 11-point lead and the football to start the half. Trump? Well, I just want to remind the people that last week the New England Patriots held the Buffalo Bills to 36 yards total offense in the second half. Steve Grogan was 12 of 13. So even though they had a pretty rough first half, 
This is a team that has the ability to come back. Fulton Walker feels the kick. Still on his feet and out near the 35-yard line. Good return by Walker. Let's look at the halftime stats, Trump. As we look, bad news for New England fans. fans Kenneth Sims will not return to the lineup. Let's look and see if we can pick out something there. Total yards, 220 to 78. Look at the uh, difference in, in uh, pass completions. 5 of 14 for Grogan, 11 of 8 uh, for one David Woodley. Obviously, the Miami Dolphins dominated the first half, and they get the ball to begin the second half. New England has not been the kind of team which has been successful this year, very often playing catch-up. The Dolphin defense is notoriously stingy, and their pass defense especially is tough, with 19 interceptions for the year and another one tacked on today. Tony Nathan, driven out of bounds by Ray Claiborne before he could get outside. Well, one of the things as a coach or as a player you hope does not happen, especially in a playoff game, is that uh, a kid as gifted as Kenneth Sims and, and a guy who is a big part of their defense who... Uh, play so well for them even though he's a rookie you can see the dejection on his face this is his first shot at the playoffs he wants to contribute for his ball club and now if the score remains the same they'll have to wait till, ne till next year second down and eight yards to go Andre Franklin carries and they're waiting for him a gain of only about three on the play once again, with Kenneth Sims out, let's talk about the guy replacing him. Mr. Crump, number 91. Uh, he is faced with the possibility of having this come at him all day long. Double team by Loxo in the tight end. You see the tight end rub off on Steve Nelson, but a good job by McGrew and the other linebackers and defensive backs coming in there to make the stop. But it is a good game for Miami, and I repeat, until he stops to play cold or several, they're going to keep running at him. They need four out of the shotgun on third down. Mark Dennard, number 63, is in to snap exclusively from the shotgun for the Dolphins. It's complete. Joe Rose makes the catch. It's a first down at midfield for Miami. Keith Lee on the coverage. Good job by Woodley not to panic. He had some pressure, but also had the time to wait. Uh, you can see Rose breaking away from Keith Lee. It was single coverage the defensive back on the tight end and generally you want an offensive receiver that in that case he wins the contact and he controls the contact that's Fulton Walker on the side and appears that they're checking his eyes make sure he's uh, still in Miami speaking of Keith Lee the strong safety he's out at least for the next few plays and the rookie from Miami of Florida Fred Marion is in Marion a fifth round draft choice where's number 31 for New England they may have taken too long to get the playoff Bob Greasy. Now that's something that will upset Don Shula or any coach in the National Football League. As you mentioned earlier, Bob, the Dolphins, the least penalized team in the NFL. That was a key play in their game plan, a play, a reverse. You're going to run it one time. They watched the films all week. They saw probably on the left defensive uh, side of the Patriots that on floor away, they'll chase a little bit. So they're going to run that play one time. They've tried it, and it was stopped in the middle of the play because of a penalty. Here's Gordon McCarter. Well, as Mike hasn't been working all day. offense, still Bob, first. Bob Kuchenberg, the only number we hear all day, that's not fair. Bob Greasy, you saw the graphic on the screen, not just this year, but seven consecutive years, the Dolphins, the least penalized team in the league. Is that a direct result of Shula's coaching? Well, he doesn't advocate it. He doesn't teach it. And when it does happen, he certainly admonishes the player, tells him you can do it without, do it the right way. Don't, don't hold or don't flip. Andre Franklin and the Dolphin offensive line did it the right way that time. Let Trump. me take it the other side of the coin. I think it's good to be penalized a certain amount. Uh, you've got to fly around there, be uh, uh, aggressive. And uh, as Grease said, I don't think that Shula really talks about it that much. He just has uh, players that are one in condition, two know the fundamentals of the game, and three don't need penalties to succeed. They very seldom are caught out of position or have to make a desperation move in pass protection or something like that to do their job. Franklin battling close to a first down. It depends on where they spot it. Why soon and Crump on the tackle. And they found a spot. They found a nest. They're running behind Loxo, who is having a great year for the Miami Dolphins anyway. And with Kenneth Sims out with a sprained ankle, they pick up another first down in that spot, and in a playoff situation, I'm 
running this in the ground, but in a playoff situation, an offensive coach like Don Shula will take advantage of that whenever and wherever he can. You got to look at Ron Meyer a second ago. He has 27 players on his roster with two years or less experience. He has 11 rookies from this year's draft alone on the roster, and most of those 11 play and contribute. Woodley off the play fake finds Nathan. Tony Nathan is down to the 15-yard line for a Dolphin first down. Interesting play in that we just saw the play run, and this is play action off of it. You see Andre flanking on the uh, on the fake. Now, in the play before, Tony Nathan took on the linebacker, and they had a good gain, Andre Franklin, for a first down. This time, they run the same play. The linemen do the same thing in the first two steps. Woodley drops back and passes it. Confusion by the defense. Good point, uh, Trump. And give credit to Shula. He's the guy calling the plays. He's got control of the game. The last thing he told those guys coming out of the locker room, we got the ball. Let's take it down and score. It'll be 21-3. to three. We'll really have it where we want it. Ball spotted at the 16-yard line. Andre Franklin gets the call. Oh. Loses the ball. Rick Sanford brings it to the 39-yard line of New England, and the Patriots escape some serious trouble. For those of you who had been watching the Raiders game against the Browns, Bob Costas, Bob Trumpy, and Bob Greasy at the Orange Bowl, the Dolphins lead 14-3, and we're trying to make it more until this Andre Franklin fumble, Trump. Very unusual, too. Andre Frank Franklin, known as a ball carrier, with great hands. Why soon 53 on the tackle? And you see Rick Sanford pick up the ball. The Miami Dolphins were driving, and as Bob Greasy just said, that if they could score in this initial drive of the second half, they can probably put away the New England Patriots, but the New England Patriots are tough to put away this season, even with their problems. All right, so the Patriots, who have been very adept at creating turnovers this year, produce another one, get out of trouble, and Tony Collins carries for about three yards on first down. Very concerned face, I believe, of Paul Dombrowski, defensive back of the New England Patriots. He's their nickel back. Former Kansas City Chief. Marv Levy, out of a job, was announced this week after five years in Kansas City. Lots of coaching changes all around the league. Play fake Grogan. Lobs it out to a wide open Collins. And Collins is at the 40-yard line of the Dolphins before being brought down by Larry Gordon. Excellent job. This team is not about to roll over and play dead. Now, once again, a great play effect. You see ball on the hip. Collins runs right over the center, and Gordon has him in coverage, but he's not really sure where to go. Therefore, the long completion. I think that fumble was a big play. The Patriots need to get some offense going. Collins in the ball game now in the second half, catches his first ball. Morgan has not caught a pass. They need to get the ball to their big play people. to Collins. Collins gets good first down yardage. Looks like a gain of six. Collins is a big play person. He's had three 100-yard rushing seasons, or three 100-yard rushing games this season. And he's another one of those surprises. Displaced Vegas Ferguson last year and has done an outstanding job. Can run it and catch it. And I agree with Greasy that they got to get the ball to Stanley Morgan. And this is the play. Second down and four. Perfect for the New England offense. 20 to play third quarter. 14 three Dolphins. Collins Amazing. again. Makes a good move to the outside. It looks like he has a first down. John Smith, Justin Cates. They missed the scoring opportunity. That is a touchdown in the first half. They cannot miss this one. Even though John Smith is a very accurate kicker, the New England Patriots pick up a first down and New England stays with that running attitude. They still try to pound it up in there. Smith is an accurate kicker, but if it came down to a long field goal, his counterpart today, Uwe von Schaman, has greater range. Broken to the air on first down, a new wrinkle in the New England attack, and the sack with Larry Gordon there, and he had some help. Bob Baumhauer, I believe, 
was the other Dolphin. Well, maybe that's why they don't try to throw it deep, even though Grogan has been very well protected for most of this season. Let's watch Stanley Morgan. One of the things that you have to do as a quarterback is that you have to see the field. And I think Grogan was pressured just enough there by Larry Gordon that he wasn't able to pick up Stanley Morgan crossing the goal line. They had seven sacks last week against Baltimore, four today. Three wide receivers in on second and 15. Now they're in trouble. Miami's got all their defensive backs in there. It appears like they got one linebacker. Expect the blitz by Dewey. Here he comes. Incomplete in the direction of Ken Toller, number 82. Doug Betters was putting some pressure on. And as Bob Greasy explained during the first half, in that situation, they line Dewey from his linebacker spot up on the line of scrimmage. He can line up anywhere he wants. He'll go on to the right side, the left side. He'll get down. He'll pop up. This is playing havoc in the minds of not only the offensive linemen, but the offensive backs who have to block him. He is creating chaos in the offensive line and in their minds, making something happen and a little indecision in all of the offensive people's minds. Third down, 15. Rogan rolling to try and find room. He's got a receiver. It's Lynn Dawson who makes his fourth reception of the day, but he's short of a first down by about five yards. Let me add something to what uh, Bob Greasy was saying about A.J. Dewey. Understand this, that offensive linemen are responsible for offensive linemen generally in pass protection. Running backs are responsible for linebackers. He wears a 77 number and plays linebacker. And you've got to account for him because if he's missed completely, then he's all over the, the quarterback's face. You can see the respect that they have for Dewey there. Grogan on a half roll to try to avoid the rush. Give himself a little more time, but it didn't produce enough yards. This is from 42 yards out of Kavanaugh's hold. John Smith nails it. truth it's a 10-point turnaround it looked like they would trail 21-3 with the Dolphins driving they come back and put three of their own on and cut it to eight provided today by producer Mike Wiseman our director Harry Coyle and their crew aided by the Goodyear blimp Bob a comment New England has scored twice both after Franklin fumbles and both will turn out to be missed opportunities when you look at the final stats. They had good field position on both. It was a uh, drive ending fumble, but they could only produce two field goals. Walker back in there and fields it at the two yard line. He was shaken up the last time he returned one. He takes some abuse here as he gets it out across the 25. Paul Dombrowski makes the tackle for New England. Bob Greasy, what are the changes in the last couple of years in David Woodley? What are the extent of his improvement? What is the extent of his improvement? And where does he still lack? Well, his assets are at the strength of his arm and his mobility. Uh, the thing that he has learned in the last couple of years, he is learning to read defenses. He is learning when to look off a, a, a weak safety, when to go to a secondary receiver. He is doing that some today. He's doing it very well. Sapolo is in motion. Woodley, who's hit on 10 of 13, swings it out to Tony Nathan. Nathan gets a block and a first down at the 37-yard line. Big part of the screen is carrying off the bluff, making everybody think that it's a straight drop-back pass. Let's watch the center, Dwight Stevenson. Uh, he wants to release, but not too quick enough to see those line, have those linebackers see the guy out there. And he's in 57 on 57. Steve Nelson, a good job by Nathan getting up underneath that block. And that's the value of Nathan. Runs with power, runs with speed, catches the ball well, and has the great instincts of a running back. Mike Webster of Pittsburgh is going to the Pro Bowl, but Sports Illustrated, for one, picked Dwight Stevenson as their all-AFC center. Bob Greasy, would you agree with that high assessment of uh, the young Dolphin? I certainly would. Uh, he came in, was playing by uh, behind uh, Dennard. Dennard was a fine center in his own right and still is. But uh, Dwight, Dwight Stevenson is much quicker than Dennard, and that's why he is uh, playing the last five or six ball games. I talked to Shula before the ball game, and I said, how difficult was it to change Dwight Stevenson from one of those Alabama, Alabama centers when they're all stretched out, going nothing before the run? And he said, that's, he's one guy that I'm particularly proud of, my ability to coach. I've taught him how to be a pro center. One hand on the ball, balanced on his feet to 
do both pass blocking and run blocking. They need three yards. Andre Franklin gets very close to that before Clayton Wise soon brings him down. We're moving down toward five minutes to play in the third quarter. Trump. Let's watch closely Dwight Stevenson here. On Lester Williams, you see that one hand out there, and uh, Lester Williams dives into the ground. Taves and Stevenson do a good job, but what it does is it keeps the center off that linebacker, Clayton Wysoon, for the tackle. He has made a, a, a tremendous transition. It is very, very difficult to teach an offensive lineman to uh, set up his stance so he can pass block first down Miami along with run block. And uh, it is very foreign for a college kid coming out of the ranks. And Shula, known first as a teacher, he told me he's very proud of what I've done with that kid. He and John Sandusky, the offensive line coach, deserve a great deal of credit. Did Shoes take credit for teaching him how to snap? Yes. Should he not have? <laughs> I've never seen him in a three-point stance in my life. Shula? Yeah. <laughs> he, was an, he was a slow defensive back, and whenever they called the coverage, he says, send him my way. I need yeah. help. Franklin carries on first down and gets into New England territory at the 49 for a gain of four. Why soon again involved on the tackle? Bob, if I may make another comment, one of the things that helps Dwight Stevenson are the people that play next to him. Bob Kuchenberg, number 67, uh, the last vestiges of the, the great Miami Dolphin teams, of which Mr. Greasy was certainly a big part of. Uh, he is one of the all-time great players, gone from rags to riches, began playing professional football at the Continental League level, and has for uh, his entire career been recognized in the NFL as one of the premier offensive linemen in the game. Woodley finds his target, Vigorito. Vigorito is at the 18-yard line before being stopped by Mike Haynes and Bob Greasy. I imagine you would point to that as an indication of Woodley's maturing and his improvement. A little play action. The coverage took away his primary receiver. He bides some time, throws it over Nelson. It's a good catch by Vigorito. They've been in that formation several times today. They've always gave the coverage towards Vigorito and that time they didn't and he got open for a first down would you not say Bob that in a, a lot of instances a young quarterback would panic put it under his arm and start running as, as opposed to going for the re reception his first year he would have done that yeah I misspoke on the spot it's at the 25 rather than the 18 now Franklin runs it to the 18 as a flag goes down Miami. A rare penalty against the Dolphins. Cephalo carries a play in from Shula. Now you noted in the first half that if Strzok is the quarterback, he calls his own plays, right, Bob Greasy? Yes, he does. Uh, of course, Don Shula has a good grasp of the game plan and will call the plays as he sees fit and the timing that he sees needs to use them. Strzok, on the other hand, will use the same plays on the same game plan, but not necessarily at the same time Shula would call him, but he's more of a pass first, run second type of guy, and and not necessarily use the same plays, but uses the plays that he thinks will, will work the best. He has the advantage of sitting there and watching to see what plays are working, which plays aren't. First and 20 from the 35, the draw to Franklin. For six, perhaps seven, George Crump on the stop. Bob Greasy, may I ask you a question, too, on Don Shula? I think it's highly unusual that a guy is responsible for the offense is not on the headset to the guys upstairs in the booth. He's standing there in his own thoughts. Uh, what, how does he make contact with the people upstairs? The man right next to him, John Sandusky, uh, the offensive line coach right there in your picture, uh, is in contact in the booth uh, where I was last year uh, talking to him. And if he needs any information as far as what are the defense doing, uh, that is given down to John Sandusky and is relayed to Shula. Second down, 14, inside three minutes to play third quarter. Woodley rolling and finding his target. The reception is good by Cephalo inside the 15-yard line. Bob Costas, I think we've seen David Woodley at his absolute best this season. This, uh, season. this is a timing play. He reads where Cephalo is going to break. This is experience between quarterback and receiver. The ball is on its way before Cephalo turns his back. It is on the money. It is low. It can't be intercepted. Nothing but positives there for Woodley. We'll watch the old man of the Miami Dolphins, Bob Kuchenberg. Whoops. Hey, Kuch, watch out there. 
placement of hands. The reception by Cephalo gets them the first down at the 13-yard line. Franklin Malone sent back. He gets the ball. And four, maybe five yards. The initial point of contact is seldom where Franklin winds up going down. One of the few times that they have run the ball to the left today. They have uh, concentrated on the right side of the offense. Unofficially, David Woodley, 13 for 16, 222 yards and a touchdown. Outstanding. Has not had one intercepted either. Look at that. Is that something? 64 to 10, although I'll tell you what, the New England Patriots have only allowed 13 points scored in the third quarter. And that's the only quarter in which they have not been outscored the third quarter. Second down, and we'll call it six. The fake to Franklin. The toss to Rich Diana, the rookie from Yale, who handles the ball for the first time and is down at the five-yard line. It appears to be short of a first down. By that much, says Rich Diana. <laughs> They're generally long. I have a wrong. I have another question for Bob Greasy. This team, more than any other team in the NFL, uses a great number of players. How does he keep all those players' minds in the game, Bob? I thought you were going to ask me, how does he keep track of all the players? And I would have said, I don't know, because it's a, he's a master on the sideline of getting the right players into the game. We're sitting here watching hordes of players run in and out. But he has a knack for knowing what he wants, and he does enough things not to, to type himself for any formation. Third and a yard. Andre Franklin gets it. First and goal. Andre Franklin is closing in on a 100-yard day. That was his 19th carry, and unofficially he has 95 yards. The New England Patriots have had their chances. They've missed both times. And the Miami Dolphins have come right back to storm down the field. Now, once again, the same as same thing I said about New England, I say about Miami. In this situation, protect the football. Concentrate on what you have to do. Listen for the snap. Get off on the snap together. That's what coaches tell offensive players. Ooh. Woody Bennett, touchdown. was very very close Bob Greasy did you notice Woodley made a full turn Bennett behind him and he barely got the ball in there it was almost on his hip watch he makes a full turn he doesn't quite get the ball in there but Bennett does a good job to get a hold of it and he's in for the score we mentioned Don Shula's masterful use of his personnel that's certainly the right man for the right job in a goal line situation big Woody Bennett you know, Bob, frankly, I'm a little bit surprised at that ball handing on the goal line because normally on the goal line, you don't want anything fancy. No chances for fumbles or a missed handoff, and that certainly was uh, one that could have been fumbled. Important extra point, and Von Schaumann is perfect with it. Now the difference is 15. The Patriots need three separate scores, and they have barely more than one quarter to accomplish that. A minute and one second remaining in the third. Can I have cause to celebrate 21-6. The Dolphins lead it. Just over a minute to play in the third quarter as Von Schaumann prepares to kick to Ricky Smith. Woody Bennett had spent most of the season on injured reserve. He played some last week against the Colts, but he had just nine carries in the regular season. Now in a playoff game, Shula shows confidence in him and puts him in twice in goal line situations. The second time, he gets the score. An interested observer on the sideline, Woody Ben. Ricky Smith at the four. Down at the 21. All right, let's watch that scoring play very quickly once again. Watch how close this is to being a problem. And, of course, as Bob said, Woody Bennett not playing the entire season. Unfamiliarity between quarterback and, re and running back. That was very, very close, but nevertheless, into the end zone, 21-6. Now New England has it at their own 22. With 51 seconds to play in the third. Second down and a long two from just shy of the 30-yard line. 17 seconds to play in the quarter. This will be the last play of the period. Tony Collins lunges very close to what they need for the first down. 
Interesting choice. Down 21 to 6. Still running the football. There's George Crump who replaced the injured Kenneth Sims at left end today for the Patriots at the end of the third quarter. 21-6 Dolphins. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Today's game is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1 and USA 1 is taking charge by Budweiser Light with a clean, distinctive taste worthy of the king of beers. And by ColecoVision, the arcade quality home video game system. There are the numbers on the Dolphins' scoring drives. They have 20 first downs today to nine for the Patriots. I was going to make a comment that it's been a pretty efficient Miami Dolphin offense today. First play of the fourth quarter. From there, 32, incomplete intended for Stanley Morgan. Bob, I'll make this comment. I do believe that the New England Patriots are really under the gun now, obviously down the score that they are, but they are now attempting to pass against the best passing defense in the NFL. Arns Parker, Shula, everybody has to feel pretty confident right at this minute that uh, they have the New England Patriots exactly where they want them. If they were up by three points, I think they'd still feel that way. Brogan took his time but couldn't hit his target who was Ken Toler some of you not those of you in the New England area but some of you will be going away at least for a while to see the Raiders and the Cleveland Browns and so now let's take you to Los Angeles and welcome to those of you who had been following the Browns and the Raiders here we've got 12 minutes and 35 seconds remaining. We're at the Orange Bowl, where the Dolphins lead at 21-6 over the Patriots. It's Miami ball at the New England 33, and a big hole for Tony Nathan. First down at the 17 of the Patriots. And unfortunately, they are once again running right at George Crump. 91, he has switched in, but they've kept track of him, and we don't want to downgrade Mr. Crump, but that's exactly what they're doing. Kuchenberg and Geisler on that side now on Crump 91, and it's a mismatch. David Woodley has been at the helm all the way for the, for the Dolphins. We've got 11.44 remaining. Andre Franklin, he's over 100 yards now. As he smacks down to the 15, the Patriot bench, Trump. As you look at the Patriot bench, Bob Greasy, I've always felt that playing down there, down here in the humidity in November and December was a tremendous advantage for the Miami Dolphins. They're used to it. They're here every day. And in the fourth quarter of a football game, when you are behind, uh, it is just uh, a very stifling sort of heat and humidity. It's a big advantage. Miami would love to have the game scheduled at 1 o'clock instead of 4 in the evening. But it is, even at this hour, uh, a great deal of difference that the Patriots have been used to all week. It's very comfortable in the stands. It's very comfortable in the booth. But when you play in this humidity, there is no relief from it. When you go to the bench, you are still physically exhausted. New England asks for timeout with 11.09 remaining. on two key offensive performers for the Dolphins. Andre Franklin, 21 carries for 100 yards on the nose. David Woodley has completed 15 of 18 throws for 244 yards and a touchdown. I would tend to think that Shula would expect 100 yards rushing out of Franklin, but the percentage of completions by Woodley has got to be a pleasant surprise for him. Woodley had completed 54% of his throws during the regular season. Oh, he's Nathan around the right end. Wysoon runs him down, but not before he crosses the 10-yard line. Great job by Wysoon to get out there. That was a half-sister to the Statue of Liberty. Bob Kuchenberg pulled out. Looked like he threw a good block for him, Bob Greasy. 
It was a half. They call that a halfback reverse. Uh, Shula is pulling out all the stops here. Uh, Kuchenberg with a good block on uh, Nelson. Wysoon making a great play. He's been a big play guy for the defense of the Patriots. Bob, a, a comment for you. Now with the score, 21 to 6, 10-32 in the fourth quarter. Is this part of the game plan, or is he giving this, uh, showing this to the next opponent? Little window dressing. Yeah, I <laughs> thought so. He is running an awful lot of strange plays here. Third down two. Andre Franklin gets first down yardage for the Dolphins. Nothing strange about that play. Bob, I got to tell you, this football team today reminds me so much of the great football teams when you were the quarterback with Zonka kick, with uh, throwing very little to the outside receivers, running as best you possibly could, throwing the ball sparingly, controlling the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. I think that's a good comparison. I think the, the thing that you're seeing is a strong running offense using the passing game when they want to, not when they have to, then they're moving the ball around. He's using a lot of people, a lot of substitutions, and he seems to be able to do anything he wants to at any time. Bob Greasy, what are the similarities between Andre Franklin and Larry Zonka? I think they're big, strong fullbacks. Neither one of them catches the ball very well, and they both run the ball very well. But Zonka never fumbled. Franklin didn't fumble today. very often. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that Franklin fumbled twice tonight. He hasn't fumbled that much all year. First and goal from the Patriots six. Woody Bennett, who scored a touchdown earlier, gets four down to the two. Watch the line of scrimmage. That is the key. It appears to me. Look at Lack, look at uh, Taves just pushing him around. A, Hardy doing an excellent job and through four quarters of that by now that defense of the New England Patriots after those long drives by the Miami Dolphins are just worn out absolutely worn out they can muster very little physical strength at this point you can see him standing on the line of scrimmage hands on hips legs crossed trying to catch a breath of fresh air exactly nine minutes left on second down from about two and a half yards away Woodley all along Bruce Hardy his second touchdown reception. <laughs> now, Bob, you see the value of a good running team. Faking the handoff to Franklin up the middle, the linebackers have to respect that. And Hardy just sneaks out there like he came in from uh, the southeast gate. When you can run the ball with the effectiveness that the Miami Dolphins have today, those linebackers on the defense, they have to be at the line of scrimmage protecting against the run. And Woodley is very good at deception. Hardy wide open. On Shaman for the 28th point, and there it is. Miami's domination of New England continues, and as we mentioned earlier, as the playoffs continue, they've got the home field advantage against any AFC opponent except the Raiders. The atmosphere at the Orange Bowl, and why not? More than 73,000 people here, and they have seen what they came to see, 28-6 Dolphins. Look at those drives. Well, that wears the defense down. We have Tom Oros of the Miami Dolphins unofficially with just one punt on the day for 51 yards. That shows the offensive dominance of the Miami Dolphins. On Shaman booms it into the end zone, and Ricky Smith decides to stay right there. Well, as Ron Meyer said, in preparation for this game, if we go to Miami and win, we will have executed properly. If we go to Miami and lose, we're a lousy football team. Unfortunately, that basically is the truth. It, it is a misconception by a lot of people. They'll point at Mr. Crump. They'll point at Drogan's inability to throw the ball down the field. And the rumors and the charges back and forth begin to be thrown when this game is over. Drogan will throw now on every down. Hasselbeck makes the catch and a nice bit of running after the reception for a first down at the 36-yard line. But they still break a lot of rules, New England. They're still running with two tight ends, two wide receivers, and one running back. They don't put their quickest people in the game. Does that surprise you, Bob? 
the thing that doesn't surprise me is the fact that Bill Arnsbarger and the Dolphins have taken away the big play guy of the Patriots, and that's uh, Stanley Morgan. Excellent point. Stanley Morgan has not caught a ball, or if he has, he only caught one ball all day. And Tony Collins is not in the ball game that much. So they're playing to the tight ends or throwing to the tight ends, and that's what the Dolphins are giving them. Yeah, great point. You mentioned Bill Arnsbarger, and we've talked about some of Shula's other assistants today. We ought to mention David Shula, Don's son, who has decided to quit law school and continue full-time as the Dolphins' receivers coach. Youngest assistant coach, I believe, in the NFL at 23 years old. He'll do a good job. David's a smart man, and as Don Shula said, he knows how I think. <laughs> remaining. Brogan finds Hasselbeck in Dolphin territory. He's across Miami's 45. As they spot the ball, let's go to New York for an update. Thank you, Bob Costas. In Los Angeles, the Raiders continuing to pile up the yardage on the Browns' defense. Here, Plunkett hits Malcolm Barnwell for 24 yards, and the Raiders are threatening to make it a route. It's 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Bob? And Mike, uh, here it's already a route. 28-6 in the fourth quarter. 7-15 remaining. Brogan with a world of time and with a receiver. It's Hasselbeck again. The third pass he's caught on this drive. He's close to a first down, Trump. Still respect on the Miami Dolphins' part defensively. They are not going with a prevent defense or with five or six defensive backs. They're staying with their standard defense. Uh, three down, four linebackers, and four defensive backs because New England likes to run the football, even down this much. Trump, I see Andy Johnson now in the Patriot lineup. Uh, a man that Don Shula would like to have. This will be his first appearance this season, I believe. Broke a hand in preseason, held out until now. Van Egan on the draw. They needed less than a yard. He got, obviously, much more than that. A first down at the 29-yard line. Had a broken hand, but he is one of those multi-purpose backs that every coach dreams of. If you can get him in there, he can throw it. He runs it. He's a smart kid. He won't make the mental mistake. Good blocker. Great pass receiver. Brogan on first down. Taking what they give him. And in this case, it's a short flip to Johnson. Johnson was one of the many who were displeased with the Meyer regime and spoke out publicly about it this year, Trump. This is first first pass reception of the 1982 season. And I wonder what the New England Patriots would have been with him in the lineup for the 10 games they've now played. He is a very, very valuable performer. They're difficult to find people like him. 5.35 and ticking, second and three. Hasselbeck. Touchdown. Great catch. You know, Grogan threw that ball over four defensive players by the Miami Dolphins. Good touch on the football by Grogan. And Hasselbeck, of course, at 6-7. Watch this. He kind of throws it in desperation. Not set the throw, but throws it anyway. And it's 6-7. Hasselbeck wins the jump ball. Touchdown. Watch again. Look at the guys. One, two, three. Now oh, there's just three. Excuse me, not four. But that is a fine, fine throw. The fourth reception by Hasselbeck on this drive. The first touchdown of the long day for New England. Smith's point after sneaks through. Great job by Kavanaugh to get the ball down. It was a bad snap. Five minutes and 22 seconds remaining. Grogan and Hasselbeck have made it 28-13. Looking here at about a 100% likelihood of an onside kick, Trump. I would think so. John Smith is very adept at it, too. The hands team for Miami at the New England 45. The ball must travel 10 yards. They go with the shift. Miami moves a bit along with them. I don't know if that went 10 yards. It didn't. Out of bounds, and it will cost the Patriots five. And they'll do it again. And as 
they do, will tell you that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Frank Hawkins just scored for the Los Angeles Raiders to score that game now 27-10 over the Cleveland Browns. And to this point, all of the home teams have won in the games in both the NFC and the AFC today. They fill it as the Super Bowl tournament, considering the shortened season and some teams with losing records involved in the playoffs. Some cynics have dubbed it the Pseudo Bowl tournament. Dolphin came up and grabbed it on the fly and Miami will have it in New England territory actually inside the Patriot 40 looked like Joe Rose Jimmy Cephalo Cephalo all right number, Cephalo, 81. number 81 he got a good bounce watch this thing it comes right up to his chest as the special teams goes for New England you hope that it doesn't get up that high he still makes a good grab as it dives to the ground Jimmy Cephalo out of Penn State and the Dolphins have it across the 40 with 5.14 remaining. That's too bad Kenneth Sims got hurt for the New England Patriots. I think it might have made a difference in this ball game. You know that? Tommy Nathan keeps on churning and gets six. By the time they snap it again, there'll be less than five minutes remaining as we check in with New York. Thank you, Bob. It appears that the Los Angeles Raiders have just too much talent for the Cleveland Browns here. Frank Hawkins comes off the bench and scores from one yard out, and now the Raiders lead the Browns 27-10 in the fourth quarter. Up. All right, thank you, Mike Adamway. We've got four minutes and 38 seconds remaining here. The view from the blimp from the cheap seats at the Orange Bowl. Julius Adams makes the tackle on the carry by Andre Franklin, who adds to his total, which already exceeds 100 yards. It'll be third down and one. This ball game has moved along pretty quickly, and so when it ends, most of you who are watching this game now will be switched out to Los Angeles for the conclusion of the Browns Raiders game. have the first down the elephant backs again Bennett and Franklin total yards unofficially well there it is 439 to 258 as we mentioned the Dolphins have been the stingiest in the entire league in terms of total yards allowed by their opponents I see Dennard coming in the ball game now number 63 Oh, he's replacing Taves at guard. I know that the Miami Dolphins have uh, historically been a uh, an interchangeable offensive line. They've got like four guys that can play center and both guards. Right, Bob? Well, Trump, Dennard has not been a guard, and I don't think has ever been a guard, certainly not while he's been with the Dolphins. But with the injury to uh, Ed Newman a couple of games ago, that necessitated Taves moving up to, to right guard, and they didn't really have a backup guard. Uh, Stevenson was the backup, the third backup at guard, but since he's now the starting center, Dennard has learned the guard position, and I'm sure John Sandusky wants to get him in the ball game to get a little experience in ah, the guard position. Interesting. Clock is running with 3.25 remaining. First and 10 from just across the New England third. Six yards on first down. Great job by Stevenson. Did an excellent job at the at the point of the run. He has played outstanding football and 
And when an offense can gain as much yards as it has rushing today, the center's got to get an awful lot of the credit because by controlling that nose man, he can free up one of the other guards to take on the pursuit linebacker. So the guy from the backside can't go to the strong side and make the tackle. Stevenson has been able to hand, handle all of the nose men. Luther Henson now, Lester Sims before, almost by himself. The two-minute warning will probably follow this play. All popped loose as Franklin went down. Who's got it? No signal yet. That's one thing, Bob. New England the ball. Patriots have got to be doing is grabbing for the ball. The only chance they've got is to go for the ball and get a fumble. They've got the football now, but they have only two minutes and 19 seconds remaining. Rick Sanford with his second fumble recovery of the day. And Franklin's third fumble of the day. Well, he's more than atoned for that with better than 100 yards rushing and a touchdown. Not with Shula. We'll return to the Orange Bowl in a minute. We are USA One, and proving it in Chevy Cavalier with more power from a new high-compression 2-liter engine with electronic fuel injection. Cavalier has it. Accord doesn't. Corolla doesn't. Sentra doesn't. Cavalier has new lower prices for 83, plus a full line of models, including one the leading imports don't even offer. Chevy Cavalier, from America's sales leader. Usually in a big game, turnover is an important statistic, but here it's misleading. The Dolphins with three turnovers, all fumbles by Andre Franklin, one recovered by Keith Lee, two others by Rick Sanford. The only New England turnover, an interception by Gerald Small of the Dolphins late in the first half, and yet the Dolphins lead here by 15 points, 28-13 with just over two minutes remaining. Brogan to Hasselbeck. yard line he's going to wind up with some impressive numbers at the end of this day Trump hurry up offense and I believe Bob Greasy made the, the best point of the day when he said that Miami has managed to keep the New England Patriots best off offensive threat pretty much silent Stanley Morgan has not had a catch today unofficially I don't believe he's had one that counted And now some hard feelings down on the Orange Bowl turf we've reached two minutes to play there's a penalty marker on this play The play didn't count. It was blown dead before the pass was thrown by Grogan. I think it's going to be delay of game. Oh, the two-minute warning. The two-minute warning hit before they could get the play off. That's exactly right, Trump. Who do we have pictured here? Don Shula looking out over a winning... Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes. 1970, Tom Dempsey will try to do the impossible, kick a 63-yard field goal. Joe Scarpetti gets the ball down. Dempsey caught it solid, and it's... It's good! Tom Dempsey has just kicked a 63-yard field goal. With no time left on the clock, the Saints beat the Lions 19-17. Season. A berth in the playoffs, even in a strange season like this one, has to be a plus coming off 2-14 and 14 just a year ago. Yeah, I would think so. And we're going to find out officially now who, are the, who those complainers are. Uh, apparently, John Hanna, if what's stated in the press is correct, has made a deal that he keeps quiet until the season's over. But I've talked to people at the New England Patriots, and they said there is no way in the world they will trade John Hanna. No way in the world, nor will they trade Stanley Morgan. And both have stated that they do want to be traded. Hasselbeck makes yet another catch. This one incomplete in the direction of Preston Brown. So this will leave them with second and ten. I, I will tell you this. I, I think it's safe to say that both uh, the coach and the players will have to meet some common ground. I mean, they have one. And uh, if, if there is uh, some... Some uh, dressing up to do for the offense. And that, of course, is Ron Meyer's responsibility. But I remind you of the fact that, that until this year, they'd been under the same system. Uh, Chuck Fairbanks, I believe, came to New England in 1973. And Ron Ehr Earhart succeeded him. So they were basically under the same system. This is the first year in a Ron Meyer system. And they're five and four, as you said. There are some real positives. Tipped yep. and intercepted. And here's the lateral. 
to Fulton Walker. It was intercepted, McNeil, by Don McNeil. And then Fulton Walker, who was in as an extra defensive back trailing the play, got the pitch. So a little added excitement for the more than 73,000 at the Orange Bowl. Watch it again. You know, a lot of people have asked the question, why is the Dolphins secondary in defense number one in the National Football League? I think it's for two reasons. Number one are the intelligent players that they have. The Blackwood brothers are not great athletes. They are very intelligent. Brzezinski is very intelligent. They do it with their smarts. Secondly, Bill Orangebarger is letting them be more aggressive this year. In the past, they've sat back and been passive. This year, they've been more aggressive, put more heat on the quarterback, and they're coming up with a lot of interceptions. We'll return to wrap it up in the Orange Bowl in just a minute. We are USA. But this pass, Paul McDonald to Dwight Walker is ruled incomplete. Now we'll be joining the Browns Raiders game at the conclusion of the New England Miami contest. Bob? Thank you, Mike. And we're a minute and 23 seconds away from that conclusion. Miami now will sit back, wait for tomorrow's games, and try and figure out who they'll be playing next week. Tomorrow on NBC, San Diego, Pittsburgh, the Jets at Cincinnati. Here's Woody Bennett. Tripped up at the 28-yard line. We'll move inside a minute before the next snap. The Dolphins lost just one game this year within the AFC, and that was the snow game at Foxborough to these Patriots. Their other loss came against Tampa Bay. You'd have to say they're a legitimate Super Bowl contender, right, Trump? With the, uh, the way in which they win, ball control, very intimidating type of defense. They really hit you when you catch it. As Bob just said, in a very aggressive defense, confusion on defense. And if Andre Franklin can continue to carry the ball the way he has today, yeah, they got to be considered one of the favorites because that ball control and defense wins in uh, postseason play. Bob Greasy. A lot of people have said that they don't think that the Dolphins can win the Super Bowl with a two-quarterback system. Shula has done, done that. He has won for the last two years. And I think if anybody can do it, Don Shula is the man that can do it. One final comment. That is the Miami Dolphins' first playoff victory since 1970. Since January of 74 when they beat Minnesota January, yeah. for their second consecutive Super Bowl title, it snaps a four-game playoff losing streak. But, of course, a couple of those losses were classic games. That 28-26 game at Oakland with the Clarence Davis catch in the end zone in the final seconds in the overtime game here last year against Dan Fouts and the Chargers when Kellen Winslow had such a marvelous game for San Diego. But here the final is 28-13. The Dolphins win it. For Bob Greasy and Bob Trumpy, I'm Bob Costas, and we'll come back to wrap it up at the Orange Bowl in just a moment. In just a few moments, we'll be switching you out to Los Angeles to see the conclusion of the game between the Browns and the Raiders. But before we do that, let's go to the folks in New York at NFL 82. No blower. And you said after that game that Don Shula's not going to forget that. Now, you were at the ball game in the Orange Bowl. What happened? He didn't forget it. <laughs> you know what's customary after the ball game is the head coaches go to the middle of the field. They shake hands and wish each other well. Well, the Miami Dolphins beat the uh, Patriots pretty handily in that ball game. There was one thing that was absent at the end of that game. As you look to the middle of the field, there was no Don Shula. There was a Ron Meyer. Shula was in the locker room. There was no way that he was going to go out there and shake hands with Ron Meyer. The guy has a memory like an elephant. He doesn't forget, and it's going to be a long time before those two guys get together. When you watch Shula on the sidelines, there's no secret of how he's feeling. I mean, he displays his emotion right there. Not all coaches are that way, though. I can think of Tom Flores of the Raiders. Now, he's been the vote of the eight. Detroit Lions were hoping to find a place in the sun last Saturday. But in a Super Bowl tournament contest at Washington's RFK Stadium, the only thing that beat down upon them was the Redskins' defense. Eric Hipple wilted under a Washington pass rush that sacked him four times, and he was absolutely burned by cornerback Jerris White, number 45.
White's 77-yard interception return got the Redskins on the board midway through the first quarter. And they never had to look back, thanks to the passing combination of Joe Theismann and 5-foot, 7-inch Alvin Garrett. Subbing for injured wide receiver Art Monk, Little Alvin, number 89, had entered the game with just six receptions in his entire three-year career. Against the Lions, he equaled that total while scoring on three of those catches. By the third quarter, Washington had built a 31-0 lead that forced Hipple to throw on nearly every down. Only once did his desperation passing pay off. Number 81, David Hill's touchdown reception accounted for Detroit's only score of the day. After the tally, Hipple was left to the mercy of a hungry redskin defense that wasn't feeling especially merciful. Thanks to their easy 31-7 victory, the Redskins will get a chance to radiate the same kind of power against Minnesota this weekend, while the Lions were left with anything but a sunny disposition. Warm feelings were none too abundant in Green Bay, where the locals greeted the visiting St. Louis Cardinals with a noticeable chill. The cards responded with a few snowballs that actually registered more direct hits against the fans than they did against the Packers. The poor Cardinals were really left out in the cold and had nowhere to turn. From the stands, they were stung by snow. From the field, they were pelted with passes. Packers erased a 3-0 St. Louis first quarter lead when Lynn Dickey and number 83 John Jefferson combined on a 60-yard pass play that resulted in J.J.'s first touchdown of the year. After Jefferson slapped hands with the spectators, the Packers continued to smack the Cardinals around as Dickey went looking for the other member of Green Bay's dangerous duo of wide receivers, James Lofton, number 80, and found him all alone in the end zone. Between them, Lofton and Jeff.